I'll give everyone a home little tour. This is some behind the scenes. The behind the scenes of setup. <laughs> how the magic's made. Yeah, it's it is worse little, or better, like, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, like, I feel like I've been looking at it too long now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, however, I'm you had it in the beginning, I think was our best bet. So I shouldn't even yeah, have said anything, probably. to be honest. Let me go back. Let me How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg Podcast. We're here with Louis Moss. I'm sure you know him from his own channel or previous episodes. And uh, to start it off, I just want to say thank you for coming on. I was in a little pinch, had someone cancel on me, and my man came fr straight from the bar to the to the <laughs> yeah. studio to record. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm kind of fine, to be fair. I literally just like, finished work, went for a couple of bevs, and... Um, yeah, obviously got your message on the train home, just eating a, a chili so quickly. And uh, yeah, we're on the pod. So I've had a few beers, but it, it's all good. We're, we're ready to go. <laughs> For sure. How, uh, man, like last time we chatted, it was probably like, I would think maybe a full year ago now, or maybe a little bit less. What have you kind of, how have you kind of yeah. been since then? What's new? Yeah, a little bit less. Yeah, I know. I feel like a lot has changed, but like not, not a lot looks like it's changed. Mm -hmm. yeah, in a sense I've been very antisocial when I last come on the pod I remember I was like bigging it up I was like yeah this year you're going to see so much on the Lumos channel the YouTube channel <laughs> Seaside Club it's all going to be popping off by the end of this yeah. time you know there's so much to come and I've just been yeah I've been slacking I've been on yeah I've been working lots but not not on the socials I've been working on other stuff unfortunately um, yeah. well fortunately but not unfortunately so but yeah lots, yeah, lots of changes all been good yeah a lot, lot of changes it's always hard to you know like i try not to say stuff because i don't want to like not do it you know i try to just wait until i do something and then i say all right here it is because every time i talk about something whether it's like some exciting client project i'm about to work on or some plans i have then it like falls through and everyone's like yo where's the where's yeah. that thing and you're like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, me I messed up i messed up i talked it up too much i talked it up too much i've messed i messed up but it's all good yeah, it is all good. Um, I was just watching your video before this, um, yeah. your vlog, and uh, appreciate the shout out, by the way. That was funny. Oh, I commented on the video before I got to that part so that I went and edited <laughs> yeah. the comment. I was like, oh, shit, thanks. Um, it's funny because uh, I think when you create, you, you probably know this because um, we've talked about it. When you create stuff, you're always kind of you know, self-conscious or a little bit like worried about how it's going to come off. And to hear you say like, oh, you know, that's aesthetic or whatever. I was surprised because like I filmed that shit on my phone, you know, and I was just like, oh, mate, like messing around. Yeah. Big time. I remember, remember we like we spoke not too long ago and we we're just talking about like our content and like, you know, stepping away from maybe the the standard format that what we've done before, that standard on screen, you've got the camera and your screen recording. It's very, yeah. very like you know, instruction, like instruction based, it's very like, you know, teacher, student format. Yeah. And um, we've spoken a lot about like, kind of wanting to step away from that. Um, I guess like, that's the difference with the podcast. You're, it's very social, it's very, you know, um, and yeah, we spoke about that stuff and <laughs> I was like filming this video and I've been editing it and I filmed like, you know, a few, a few bits of it, editing a bit more. And I was like, you know, 90% edited. <laughs> and I was just like, just uploaded day in the life. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, watch that one. And then I was like, oh my God, it's so, <laughs> it just looked so much nicer. And I was like, oh no. And they even had the uh, the alarm clock intro. And I was like, I've gone for the alarm <laughs> clock intro too. <laughs> we're, all, we're all the same. We're all the same really. Dude, so, I know. Uh, I, yeah, I've been watching sick. other people too. And I'll, I'll, whether it's like on Instagram or YouTube, like they'll throw something out there that's like, I'm just about to finish. And then I, I, I hit them up. I'm like, yeah, I swear, like, I, I had this idea at the same time as you, you know, like, I'm not just putting this out right after you, because <laughs> yeah. it, it feels that way sometimes. I've, I've felt that way towards other people, and they've felt that way towards me, but no, I think we're all good. just, like, the same fucking person, you know? At the oh, end of I the think day. so, too. Literally, I think everyone's exactly the same, just, like, living in a different area other than that. All the yeah. same. Except it was rewarding, though. What was that? I was like, you've got the filter coffee going on, you know, you've got like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah. like a uh, cliche. Sometimes I, it's funny though, because there's like just levels to this shit because I watch other people's like vlogs and shit and it's like so cinematic and like they're 4K yeah. and like, it's just like, yeah. 
<laughs> amazing and i'm looking at those like holy shit like i need to get a fucking crazy ass like sony camera with all these lenses and stuff but some of those people yeah. are like filmmakers and things so it's kind of hard to compare yourself to that you know yeah i got, I got this new camera and like, well, i've got a decent camera decent lens and i've just I wasn't, I wasn't up to vlogging on it. Like, you know, I was, when I was walking in the street, I was like, there's no way I'm ready to be it's embarrassing, holding like, huh? the full <laughs> setup walking down the street with the camera and the lens going. Yeah. I was like, I'm whipping the, whipping the phone out. So I ain't ready for that life yet. Yeah. You got to build up to that. That's a bit of a, yeah. Yeah. You got, you got to build up to that lifestyle. I'm not, I'm not there quite yeah. yet, but good to see oh, my friends. LA, man. It looks, it looks happening. It looks like a lot of stuff's going on. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's definitely like I tried to, make it a little in, more interesting than maybe a normal i don't go out to fucking out in the town for lunch every day or anything like that usually i'm like yeah. more like on your vibe eating like the sandwich <laughs> or whatever you know? but i Man, was like you deal. know that's, the, that's not ideal i was re i've been reading this book uh it's called like unfair advantages i think or unfair advantage and it's all about like teaching you and 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 learning about like what are these things it's like about startups and entrepreneurs and it's like what do you have that's like your unfair advantage that and they they define that as like something that someone can't just get within like the next day or whatever so like mm -hmm. uh, my unfair advantage i guess in this youtube space would be i live out here so like i might as well yeah. use that use that you know like go show like la or be like this is los angeles and like it's not like i think i'm fucking cool or anything for living out here but one thing i realized is that people are always going to be interested in places that they don't live you know so oh, I'm, saying, like, yeah, yeah. I'm always watching shit about new york or london or whatever like oh what the what's going on over there like you know especially like the rave scene and stuff in like europe i'm always like oh it looks so cool and then yeah other people are like oh you live in la like you must be you must be uh, you know seeing like brad pitt every day on the <laughs> hollywood boulevard or whatever i'm like no nah. yeah no it is that it is that it is that everyone just like it's that dream isn't it like you're looking at those places you haven't lived at before you know you haven't been before is you know people find that interesting so mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I'd probably be more interested in watching, you know, videos from people that don't live in the area I do purely because I don't live in that right. area. You know, if I moved to LA tomorrow, I probably wouldn't be as interested in LA, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just one of those things, but yeah. It's like it's we exciting. were talking about the, um, you mentioned we were kind of talking about pivoting a little bit in the YouTube space because I mean, people maybe don't know this or maybe they do like it gets kind of boring just like creating tutorials and shit like yeah they yeah. maybe they help people and that part's rewarding but like i wouldn't necessarily say that it's like fun you know like just being like this is how you do this this is how you do this like having to explain everything like so specifically it gets a little bit like um it feels a lot more like work you know and just kind of like yeah. draining in a way and do that that video of the day in the life the fact that it did well um, was pretty like, what's the word? Like, I guess affirming or whatever. Like it made me feel like, oh shit, like I can do these other things. And it seems like people like mess with it. Cause we both already wanted to do that. And the fact that if we see that it's like, it works too, then that's like a win-win, you know? Big time. I, it's probably one of the reasons I've been so like bad at posting on a regular basis is cause like, yeah, these sort of like, I guess the, the main thing is like, I know some like people are going to watch it and they, you know, people want to know that stuff. Like I got a little brother who's in design and he's always like, Oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I'm always like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to record a tutorial anyway. Like you can go watch that and follow along. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it isn't as enjoyable as, yeah, I guess that's why I haven't posted as much is because I, I wasn't really loving doing that sort of stuff. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. I know it's probably going to get a better, more views, but I don't really love doing it to be fair. Um, I don't mind, like it's not, you know, it's nothing bad, but it's just uh, right. I'm not really like passionate about, making tutorials really so mm. i guess that's like where we were talking about like how we can sort of step away from that but still have that creative lens on creating content and things that people are going to like and people think you know things that we're going to enjoy creating but like mm -hmm. how can we create something slightly different it's not so you know clinical and informative it's like very like on screen yeah. you know with this other thing and you're cutting between two and it's very like people who aren't in design who aren't graphic designers not necessarily going to find it an enjoyable watch i think right which is something i've been thinking about a lot like i, I want anyone who's in any creative industry or you know mm -hmm. just your average person to find it interesting and want to follow along and 
you know, your, your day in the life, for, for instance, you don't have to be like a, you know, a hardcore graphic designer who knows the right. ins and outs of Photoshops to, to follow along and find that an enjoyable piece of content and relate to you. Um, any Anyone can watch that and be like, oh, this is cool. You know, oh, I like this guy's mm. creative process, this, that, and the other. So, yeah. Exactly. I think that's... It's funny. You, t you, tell, you tell your brother, like, you're going to have to wait for the tutorial, kid. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you ain't getting any high-class treatment, mate. Like, you're going to have to, like, wait for the tutorial and you make sure you smash the like button on that one as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, it's, it's also, um, you know, you're one of the probably first people to make stuff about this but like how many more chrome types and like ink bleed tutorials do we need you know like the, i oh, see yeah. a new one like every day and like every one gets like fucking 50k plus views and it's like i could just do this yeah. if i wanted to and like get the it's like free free money you know or whatever but it's kind of like why wouldn't i just direct people to like your tutorial or someone else that already did it it's like Mm. we're we're like we're supposed to be these creative people but we come up with this we can't come up with new ideas you know like it, uh, I, there's so many things that i don't know how to do that people still haven't made tutorials on but then we're still kind of recycling like the same shit it's weird yeah i feel like it's just like that easy easy route i guess um but it's like it's you know it's, it's, it's the i guess the steps that people take in a lot of in, in that creative process, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to start with this. This is what I know. And then they move <laughs> on to the next thing. And then, and, you know, this is exactly where I started. And you move down the line and you gradually figure out what you want to do and what you like doing. And then you start incorporating more of your own style and you gradually move towards that space. Right. Um, I think a, a lot of the people, like, a lot of the graphic designers, like me, like you, like the other people who are popping up, they're we're very new in this sort of black background, dark aesthetic, mm. YouTube tutorial space. Like it, it's kind of like a past few years it's sort of all grown i guess everyone's yeah. still trying to figure out what the right path is i guess in the way mm -hmm. like it's not the same traditional path as like i don't know a fashion vlogger who's like this is you do this this sort of stuff still right. everyone's still kind of figuring out like how they as a graphic designer make it as a content creator as well you know when i was in school like i i all these kids i see online like they're super talented and they have you know all these followers and whatnot and like it's it's crazy to me to think like some of these people are like 16 17 18 or whatever because when i was in like college and or university uh i didn't like none of my classmates had like they none of them were popular online or any of that shit like they didn't even post like designs they just posted pictures of them like at the bar or some shit like i yeah. feel like uh it's like a whole different like world to see like some of these like kids and shit like i feel like they're gonna be like super good when they're like even in their 20s or whatever because they're already oh, like yeah in the scene and like learning and like just taking in all this information at once yeah big time i mean this is one of those things that you shouldn't compare yourself like mate honestly like i'm out I, I look about like 12 still i don't age but um you know i'm late 20s now like 20 i'm pushing 30 in the next couple of years yeah i look back at these kids or like people who are coming up now and i'm like oh you guys have like you're always way ahead of where i am like yeah all these followers you're doing this you're doing that i'm comparing myself to these younger people who have got so much more and i'm like oh i haven't made it because of that but it's not that's not the way to look at it really like everyone's on their own mm -hmm. sort of sort of journey figuring out how they're getting down down the line sort of thing like you should never yeah. compare yourself to someone else and they're because they're completely different they might have completely different circumstances right. their life's completely different like you know everyone's on their own individual sort of sort of journey you know you could be 60 70 just starting out as a graphic designer it doesn't mean it's like mm -hmm. you're you know that's it you're, you're not you're done out because there's all these 18 year olds who have done it you know you're, you're right. just starting your journey and you, you might get where you are like it's like um it's kind of corny or whatever but they have that quote that's like the the best time to start on something was yesterday, but the second best time yeah. is, is right now or whatever. Cause yeah. it's so easy to be like, Oh, uh, that. And like, I see these kids sometimes, I think I've talked about this on an older podcast. They're like 16. They've reached out to me like, Oh, like I'm not getting like enough clients or whatever. And I'm like clients, like, what do you mean clients? Like go, like yeah. go out and like, hang with your friends like go ride your bike or do what i like you're 16 years <laughs> yeah. old like i didn't even know what a client was when i was 16 like no. i was out like smoking weed behind the school and shit, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah 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 
Mate, I was, a, I was a proper skate rat until like yeah. 18, 19. Like, I didn't leave the skate park. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's too much pressure, I think, on people at a younger age that they have to like make it in this certain way, especially in the social, spend, uh, mm -hmm. social scene. Like this whole social world and followers and this young age, like you don't have to make it at this young age. I'm still like, you know, I'm 20, almost 27. I'm still young in the grand scheme of right. things. If I haven't made it now, that, that's fine. There's still so many years. Like mm -hmm. it's still, you know, there's this pressure that you have to make it like a super young or you haven't made it like by a certain age. And it's just not right. It's not true. Like that isn't a true representation right. of like how life works. Um, yeah, you, you don't need to make it by this young age. Like you're still figuring things out. Like, I know people like my parents' age, they're just still figuring their life out and they're like, you know, 50s, you know. It's, yeah. It's, don't worry about it at this age. Just do what you want to yeah. do. Enjoy what you want to do and figure it out and it will eventually come. But if it doesn't, like, don't worry about it. Like, mm -hmm. it's, I think too, like, too we pressure. see so much, like, the internet, you know, we have so much access to, like, design, you know, being an actor, whatever you're trying to do the people you see online, like the, a lot of times they're the, the very best people at that thing. Right. So it's easy to look yeah. at that and be like, Oh, I want to do that. But at the end of the day, like you, you shouldn't feel bad if you don't even ever get there because that's like, some of these people are like in, in like the one percentile of like whatever their career is, you know, like you can't mm -hmm. be, if everyone was the best, then that no one would be the best, you know, like exactly. obviously pe people are always going to be better, worse, whatever. Um, but whatever, a enough of that. What I wanted to ask you about another thing was I was watching your, yeah, like your vlog thing. And I liked how you incorporated the like design though, too. Like I've been thinking of ways to kind of like not full on just be like, this is my life, but also, yeah, like maybe incorporate the client work or whatever. I, I had never really thought of that. That was a good idea. And, um, I saw you doing the logos and I was wondering when you do like, I do the same like kind of thing. Right. So for anyone, if they haven't watched it, you were presenting like the idea that they kind of wanted something more like out there and then something maybe like that's like proper, you think good design or whatever, which yeah, one do yeah. you think that, do you find it hard to like, do they usually choose the one that you like or resort back to like what you get, the one you gave them that they wanted? So the way I normally structure it is like, I always normally pre present at least a minimum of three different routes. Like it depends on how much, how big the client is, how big the project is. Sometimes I've done routes right. up to like five or six different routes, but especially especially for a branding project, like you, you want to offer them something different for each route, right? You don't want to have any too similar because they'll start Frankenstein in ideas. They'll be like, I like, I like this one, but it's, I kind of like this one as well. And what I want to do is merge those two together. Uh, and yeah. what you end up is, is is like this mismatch of some bullshit stuff. <laughs> They're like, I like this, I like this. And they try, they try to put it together and it's not right. They, they Then things don't go together. Um, but the way I normally present like these routes is you normally have, they, they've already come to you with an idea. And sometimes they'll give you references or sometimes they will give you I copy this logo I want this logo I want this they, they have an idea mm -hmm. of what they want <clears throat> so the first route I always do is I, I I kind of direct exactly what they want and exactly what they're asking for specific like you know if they give me references I'm like bang on the nose of, of what you want the second one I always go for a little bit more like push it out there kind of what they want kind of what they reference but like a safe version of what I think they might yeah. want but it's also kind of cool or whatever like it's a it's a middle ground. And then I always go for the third one that's either a way out there version that's like, they're probably not gonna like it, but it's like what I think is really cool or something I really like or something I know in the design world is is really cool or something mm -hmm. that I just, yeah, personally think myself, this is what I think is right for this. Um, right. And then they're, they're presented them with the three options where they have their idea there in front of them and they have this other idea and then they have this final idea which is usually the one that I think is is right, but it, the, what, why why do I think it's right? Like it doesn't mean right. I'm, I'm right. It's like it's completely subjective. Any piece of anything, you know, design wise is is subjective. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's not. The, the problem is, is this the client work is it's not. It's not your design. It's for them, and it, it's yeah. not necessarily for your portfolio. You're designing to fill a a need for right. them. You're meeting their brief, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's per portfolio worthy or it's a piece of design that you personally would like to do. 
but you're just correctly right. meeting their brief. You can you can always advise them on what you think is right, but if they don't agree, then you you who are you to argue against what they mm-hmm. want? They're paying you for a service at the end of the day. There's only a certain level of you know pushing right. it to what you want to do. There's only a certain level you can do. So yeah, I normally have those. Yeah, those three three routes. The the that's almost like the journey I think a lot of designers go through. Where when I was younger, it was, I like. I'm like your slave, you know, like whatever you want, like I'm, I'm doing it that way. Like I'm just trying to get this, like whatever $50 that you're paying me for this logo. Yeah. And I'm like 16 or whatever. Then you kind of start to know what you're doing and you're like, nah, man, like you need this crazy, like Y2K thing or like this super yeah, cool, like yeah. minimal mark. And you're like, you kind of know, you know enough to know that like, but you're still kind of wrong. Like this ain't the right thing for the job. Yeah. And then you get into that zone. And then once you get like kind of better and you start to learn, you realize how to give them what they want, but also like design it well, you know, like kind of, kind of morph it into, and then sometimes clients will tell me things like, whoa, like this, like we never thought of it this way, but like, this is perfect. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I try not like not to be like cocky, but I'm like, yeah, that's like, that's why you hired me. Right. Like, cause you didn't yeah, think 100%. of it this way. <laughs> yeah. And it, it feels it can, good it when that happens. Go. Can always go one of two ways. Like, can always go like that. That's the ideal scenario: is you present them with this thing that you like and that you've done, and you, you're confident in, and you know yeah. is right. Um, that, that that's the that's the the ideal. But then you know, there is the other half of the time where so they're like, no, I want to go with mine and actually take this off and do this, and they want it just how they want it. Right. And it often isn't something you're necessarily proud of, but it doesn't make it wrong. You know, it's what they want and they've asked for that. It might not be the best design thing but they are happy with it. It's, it's a kind of that, that tough medium where it's like, that's not going in the mm-hmm. portfolio, but they are satisfied and that's what they want. Um, right. So I don't know, but sometimes you just need to hope that you know, sometimes you get the clients that are like, look, I trust your judgment on these things. I want you to do what you think is right sort of thing. Um, but then sometimes you don't get that, but yeah, that's the, that's, mm-hmm. that's it. People yeah, like different like stuff, I, so. And if the, I always like kind of, think about it in context you know like if this is like a really good paying project or this client is someone that i respect and like they're gonna probably even give me more work and whatever it's like at the end of the day you're supposed to like make them happy you know it doesn't matter about like your portfolio or yeah you know using helvetica or whatever the fuck you're trying to do for like this yeah. outdoor company you know like at the end of the day they're like oh you gotta you gotta kind of throw them a bone or whatever um what do you think though, what I've been, you've probably seen this yourself and I've been thinking about it after recording that video I did on like recently with ranking the fast food logos and like there, you know how like all these brands are like oversimplifying the logo, like a lot of the mm-hmm. fashion brands and, and things like you even see like St. Laurent and Balmain and all that. Now they're just like yeah, sans serif, right? Them. Like super yeah. simple. You burp, Why everything. do you think They've that everyone's it. doing that? You know, I don't know. Like everyone, it's, it's, it's a trend of like people modernize things, people simplify things. Like it's just that that process is it's a trend thing, isn't it? So like, it's not better. I would say you know, like it's I wouldn't it's say kind it's of better, dry. No. It is dry. It's it's it it works for the odd company that that has it first, or you know, has done it and it stands out, and then everyone else does it, and then suddenly it's the norm again, and then someone will do something else to then be different from the norm. And then everyone else will yeah. do that and that and that. It's just a cycle of trends and it will do that for forever. It will never stop. Like it will just keep going and going and going. It's how it happens. You look at, I was just looking back at some early like 2000s, you know, like early MSN days and like, things that were trendy then, like the Microsoft Word, like media player things that like come up and that was like really cool then. It's so outdated yeah. now. You know, you look at all the, you always look back at these old logos, like, you look at any logo, for instance, and it will be like the the history of their logos, and it's always like you know 2020, 2010, whatever, and it's like 1950, and it's like the best logo they've ever had, and we're like we love that. Why don't you bring that logo back? But back then that was the norm, and then they've everyone else had their logo it was like clay like in the same way, and they've upgraded it to be different or to be with the times, yeah. and it's only now we look back and 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 like it. So 
yeah, again, we'll, we'll probably look back in 50 years' time and be like, oh, look, when Burberry had that clean classic sans serif, like, sans serif typeface, yeah, that was so yeah. sick. They need to bring that back. Now that, that's true. I don't know, they don't even have a logo anymore. It's just like a 3D digital gradient that spins in a cube or something. I don't know, like whatever it is <laughs> yeah. in the future. Um, yeah, you just own like a piece of the plaid pattern as like an NFT like or some yeah, shit. Like, that's yeah. their whole logo. They, uh, it's funny because... That's the same way with, you know, when I did that, I did a poll when I made that video asking like what people's favorite logos were. And a lot of people were referencing the new Burger King and the new Pizza Hut. And then, um, you know, I already was aware of this, but looking more into like, yeah, those histories where they show, those are just the like kind of optimized versions of the ones they used to have. They just brought back like yeah. the retro or whatever. And everyone's like, it's so yeah. cool. And I'm like, yeah, it was always cool since like 1950. They just were like, yeah. fuck it. Like we don't need this like 3D gradient thing anymore. So let's let's bring it back to the OG. Yeah, I mean, people love like the nostalgia and it's why everyone is obsessed with the 90s. Like it's done out to too much now, but everyone just loves the idea of nostalgia. That's why the whole our age group, like the 90s like, aesthetic was just rinsed and rinsed yeah. and rinsed in this digital age now because, you know, obviously everything's digital. Every campaign was, oh, how do we do a 90s, us to a 90s themed everything. It just gets rinsed because people love the idea of nostalgia. And that's like the, the Burger King one right. is like a 60s take, right? That's, yeah. that's what they had in the 60s, yeah. People yeah. love that because it's like that nostalgic, that look back. Like, but if that was it the whole time, they would, you know, they wouldn't care about it now. If that was it the right. whole time, they would still be like, "Oh, Burger King logo is so cool." They'd probably look at what it was before that, or you know, it's just you uh, see the old old ones too, and they're always like drawn with like uh like a piece of charcoal or some shit, you know, like <laughs> yeah. the ones from like nineteen twenty yeah. or whatever. It's like you yeah. can't even like read it or anything. It's like yeah. a little stamp. That will like be back the, soon, honestly. You give it ten years, mate, and you'll be like, "Yeah, mate, that charcoal aesthetic was the one." Do you know what I mean? We bring it back. <laughs> I'm curious to see, like, so because I'm sure when you were in school too, like, they kind of implanted this thing in your head where, like, you know, a logo has to be like be able to work like in black, like print, digital, web, mm -hmm. like color, like kind of be simple enough to like stand out, but like and like work on all these different scales but as the internet grows and you know web 3 and like people using more 3d stuff companies being like only digital it's interesting to see how a lot of new companies their logo wouldn't work at all like in like a single color or yeah. like in print it's like a gradient you know or like some kind of mm -hmm. crazy pattern and i'm curious like if that's going to be you know the new thing like we don't need the because eventually i could see a world where we don't print things at all ever you know yeah well yeah i don't think it's too far away to be fair like we all just walk around like naked and you have like a headset and it shows like what you're wearing in like a virtual world or some it's, shit you know it sounds stupid but I, I genuinely don't think it's that like not that it's not that far away but it's not we're at a point in time where these things are not too stupid to imagine you know like yeah. the ultimate like black mirror world have you ever are you familiar with the series like black mirror yeah 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 like it, it's scary how you're like oh that's so similar and that, that is that is just they're all just real scenarios that are already happening i know that's why um, that show's so like eerie because it's like yeah it's time. like they figure out something that could actually happen and then they just give it like five ten percent more a little bit too crazy so, so where you feel like oh they'll never do that like they'll never be like bees that record you or whatever but yeah. then like now we have that already with like little hidden cameras and shit so it's kind of like, like little drones shit. yeah but i don't know like the things change the world changes technology changes and i think everything keeps up with technology and as it <laughs> does everything else sort of follows along with that whether that's branding brand identity you know as how is branding going to look like in this metaverse that everyone, you know, this whole digital right. world, like, you know, like Ready Player One sort of headset on. What does branding look like then? You don't have to care about something being a flat print logo then. You don't have to, sure. you know, that's it's com doesn't matter anymore. Like it's a completely different way to approach a, a yeah. branding project. Like, it just, it just changes with the time. I'm working on a branding project right now. Uh, and um, it's weird because I'm, I'm, kind of breaking down the project and I'm normally like, we'll do this. We'll have this branded. Like we'll get you like, you know, your, your guidelines and your logo and your colors and your fonts. And then, but I'm starting to think like half of this shit won't even matter for this company. Like they probably need yeah. like, what color are their like discord roles going to be or whatever, you know, exactly, or like what yeah. shit like that. And it's almost like you have to completely read. Cause like 
I don't think they'll ever create like, you know, stationary. So why the fuck am I going to mock yeah. up like a, a envelope know. or whatever? You know? I know, you know, you're like mocking up like a letterhead and you're mocking up like <laughs> yeah. a, a business card and like, you know, a fax or whatever. You know, like this has never been used. This is not getting used. Right, it's, it'd be more like, reasonable to mock yeah. up like a, a Roblox character with a yeah, t-shirt on honestly, it. Or shit. Honestly, honestly, yeah, that's how it's going. And it's just like, oh, yeah, and the whole NFT thing is like, the whole idea of like so much stuff, it's like so interesting, there's so much going on, but oh, my, it's just become a buzzword for everyone to use the yeah. word NFT. They're like, why don't we just do an NFT? It's like, does right. anyone in here know how to buy an nft has anyone here got an nft does anyone know how to use one like does yeah. anyone know how to save one like why would we make that as an nft when like no one knows how to buy one or hold right. one or what to do with one and it's all the companies that like uh their target audience is like 40 you know so it's like why yeah. the fuck you just make them like an actual baseball card they'd probably rather have that you know yeah or it'd be like <laughs> even like kids or whatever and it'd be like oh why don't we just make them like this you know Minecraft, Minecraft NFT or something. I was just like, honestly, none of these kids are going to know how to what even an NFT is. They right. just think it's They're a three D shape. Steal their mom's credit card and buy it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting where the world world is going, and uh, yeah, the world, where where things are all changing. It's crazy too because you talk about the kids and they're. Uh, I was reading this thing like the kids are the almost like most going to be. Uh, to be converted into this like crypto and digital world because all they do right now, especially when there was like the pandemic and all that, all they do is play game video games. They buy things for their characters that are basically like, you know, NFTs are like social mm. currency. Like, yo, I have this, this, you know, skin or this, that. So mm -hmm. like when they turn 18, they're probably going to be like, Oh, I want the, you know, like digital fucking new Jordans or whatever. Like they're going to yeah. just look at that the same way that, um, like our parents or whoever were like, yeah, collecting fucking comics or, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Like it's just gonna be, and it's weird because I'm not like a huge NFT or like Web3 advocate, but it's interesting to see how like, if you look at history, all the shit that we're saying right now, that's what the people were saying like about the internet or like email. Oh, yeah. They were like, that shit will never, you know, no one's gonna be texting like, yeah, right. Like I got my pager or whatever, like shit like that. So yeah, we'll see. Big time. Well, to, to be fair, like I can't really say anything about it. Like I'm a massive crypto advocate. Like I love it. I've got a lot of money in crypto. Like yeah, <laughs> I'm obsessed with the world and just understanding this whole future of the, the the technology. I think in a lot of these things are what I really back in a lot of ways. But I feel like it gets right. to the point where it becomes like everyone just jumps on something and they like just use it as a as a as a, as a buzzword, but doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean anything or isn't the right thing to do. It's just right. like, this is new. Let's do that. But it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, but, you know, I, I fully believe in it. I, mm -hmm. I, I genuinely think it's the way that everything's going, to be fair. Like, yeah, and it's funny to see I how, see like, it not. everything moves so slow. And, like, you, you're probably familiar with this because you're working at, like, a, a company now, right? Like, an in-house. Yeah, I work so, agency, you know in-house agency. Everything moves a lot slower, you know, like, especially, like, so you know you see people doing like campaigns and it's like some meme from like eight months ago or whatever and it's like yeah because yeah. it took them like all this time to get that shit like approved and all that so it's funny to see these companies be like let's do like a yeah like nft and then like they do it in like a year you know from like yeah, when they yeah. had the idea and like everyone's like what the hell is that like we don't even use ethereum anymore or some shit or like yeah. whatever's happening at the moment and uh I guess that was a little tangent, but my point I was trying to get at was, um, what are you, how has that been working at that? You're at like a new place, right? So like, what, yeah, yeah, what's your experience agency. been with that? Yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, I was agency before. I mean, that's why I'm probably lacking on the socials. Like everything I do on the socials or whatever is just like a kind of side side thing. I've yeah. always, like, since I've started all my socials, I've been working full time in different agencies. Uh, but yeah, just started a new agency. It's a much bigger agency than I was at before in um based in shoreditch in london yeah it's uh it's, it's hectic it's full on it's busy um but it's a slight yeah a slightly different role as well so it's like a creative design role uh rather than just graphic designer so i'm doing a lot of like coming up with the ideas of like campaigns and stuff and then sort of putting it together mm -hmm. and then pitching it to clients and things like that so 
Yeah, it's good. It's giving more me a like lot of art experience. director type of thing, kind of. Yeah, yeah, like it's a step in that direction. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. obviously where like you want to end up in the future and that sort of role. It's definitely a step in that direction. You know, it's a step up the ladder, a step in. You know, a bit more. Um, you know, I've got, I've got I've got a lot more to do in my in my role, and it's a bit more. Right. Uh, also, responsibility is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot more responsibility, and um, but it's, it's definitely a step in the right direction. But yeah, it's a lot. It's um, it's busy, very busy. But because right, I remember you posting like you had all those like gummy worms and shit. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I work for Haribo, Haribo, which is fun. That's um, yeah. working with Haribo at the moment. So yeah, we get a few few freebies from them, which is it's nice. Even though, don't tell anyone. I'm not really a sweet person. A bit more of a chocolate sort of guy, yeah. but still low mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all good. It, f- free shit, it's all good, you know. Um, yeah, it's all good. Outside of that, do you still do freelance and stuff, or do you put all your kind of energy into the agency work? I've done a lot of freelance before. Obviously, when you're coming up through, it wasn't like you know, it's only last this year, last year even that I was still a junior. Right now, that midway midway range, yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, I've only been out of uni like coming up for like what four five years you know it's I've, not long since i made it out of that so when when you're in those junior like junior ranks it is especially working like we're living in somewhere like london it's very expensive obviously freelance is like my fun money basically like i have to freelance right. if i want to it's so expensive to live here most of my rent uh, most of my salary goes on my rent and bills like i don't have a lot at the end of the day so freelancing is almost like a means to buy those things i want or if i want to save anything really i have to freelance where it has been mm-hmm. anyway for the last few years so that's more of like a, it was more of a, you had to do it necessarily than like something I wanted to do. Not right. that I don't enjoy it, I do enjoy it. But you want your free time to yourself, you know, you want to do your things you actually like. You want to relax, you want to turn off, you want to switch off. It's only been really in the last six months that I've been able to to really switch mm-hmm. off in my free time. Even if my work yeah. day is way more hectic, I'm doing more work at work, but I'm doing less work outside of work. Well, mm-hmm. like it doesn't doesn't mean I won't ever freelance again. You know, it, if the right project comes along, then yeah. But yeah, I don't need to take on every single project at the moment, which is is, is really good. So yeah. But I guess that's also made me a bit not not lazy in my free time, but just I haven't done as much social led stuff in my free time because I don't necessarily sure. have to. Um, yeah. Which you know has its pros and cons to not doing that. Yeah, when I was working at my job, like you know, salary job, I was working whatever, maybe anywhere from 40 to maybe 60 hours if it's like some bullshit we're working on, you know, that was late and whatnot. And uh, yeah, like you work on, then you work on freelance or whatever on like Saturday. So it takes you like a whole month to do a project that you could kick out in like a week if you were just like freelancing on your own, you know? And then, uh, yeah, you just get like, pretty like burnt out i i found that when you're working at a job too like that's design sometimes the design Mm -hmm. you're doing isn't like the most fun but you're still using these like heavy like creative muscles and like you're just sitting at your screen so when you're done like you don't even you can't even be bothered to like you know create a poster or whatever the fuck like you're trying to post online a hundred percent like it's just yeah it's just one of those things isn't it like yeah like when i worked a lot like, like a long week like i sat all day in front of like you know i'm designing coming up with this i'm thinking i'm trying to be like creative and i'm like using my creative juices almost all day even if none mm-hmm. of that work i can really show or be like it's not my portfolio it's not something i put on insta to show like or you know people watching or you know i still get home and i'm just like i am done like i don't yeah. want to sit there and yeah like you were saying like craft out a poster just for instagram like I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And there, there is that risk of of burning out. And I think I was getting to that point where I was creatively burning out. I wasn't enjoying really being creative or designing really anymore because I was just doing too many. I was burning it at both ends, basically burning the candle at both mm-hmm. ends, trying to spin too many plates. I wasn't really happy with any of them, really. But I truly, you kind of need to just focus on sometimes one thing at a time. And when I get, when I get to a point now where I'm comfortable, I've settled into my new job getting you know up to to grips with things it's been a few months then maybe i can start right. you know working back again on other things which is what i'm doing with like the youtube and stuff now but that's almost a different avenue it's not necessarily as hardcore like design freelance sort of stuff it's almost like a different yeah. creative it's like production yeah and it's a different it's a bit of a change yeah. so i think that's why that's more appealing than sitting there and grinding out instagram 
posts because it's just a sort of different creative route to go down. Also, most, like so. at the end of the day, like we're trying to survive and, and make money and do whatever. Like Instagram has to be the worst app ever created for like getting you anything out of it other than like yeah attention or whatever like that's all that yeah. it promises is like vanity and likes and followers like yeah. all my best clients didn't come from instagram they came from like mm -hmm. referrals and email and other stuff the algorithm yeah. is like properly just like shit now and like everyone just complains all day on the app like everything i yeah. see on there is just people like you know dancing to like their songs and then they'll throw up like their poster <laughs> yeah. at the end or whatever and it's just like yeah. fuck. like it feels like like it's like a dystopian version of like a it site is. for posting like creative work so that's why i've been trying to like not really care about it as much anymore and just post shit on there when i can and then um i uh sometimes though like you know with the youtube the podcast all this other shit it feels like i have a, enough work to do every week even without a client you know and then i'll yeah. get like a big client and i have to remember like that shit still comes first because like i need the money but sometimes i'm like oh, i gotta figure out like when am i gonna make this video or like i try to treat it like it has to be done or else i won't do it you know like i'll just mm -hmm. fuck off for like months if i wasn't staying like consistent and it's really interesting to like work for yourself fully like that because if you're like if you have a lot of things going on you can really like fill out your schedule off of like nothing almost like things yeah. that are just like you know content or whatever you want to call them it's an interesting like world that to live in because there's other people i know where they make way more money than me and all they have to do is work on like one project a month because they're so like sought after or whatever like they've elevated to this super high level you know yeah I think it's very important, like especially if you work for yourself, you need that. <clears throat> you need the um, not not necessarily the routine, but you need the like not the pressure. You need to be basically like yeah. you have to do this, 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 and this because you can't easily slack or step away if you don't have that. Like I guess there's a difference between working freelance and having a job. You've got someone down, you know, every job you're like this is your deadline. You've got these clients, you've got people waiting on you. You need to hit it by this day. It forces yeah. you to be very pro like proactive and productive, I guess. If you don't mm. necessarily have that like, pressure, you might not necessarily be as regular and as consistent as you want to be. Like, even with things such as the podcast, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have someone down, down there every day, like saying, like, you know, you need to do this, you might feel like you don't need to do it all the time. But then if you're like getting right. into a routine where you're like, I'm posting it every week, I can't miss one, you kind of force yourself into like making sure it's done on a regular basis. But I think that's very important right. if you're working for yourself. You kind of need that like motivation to. It is. I Be think too, points. like, like I could have, so you're, I'm recording with you. Like I could have just not done this and, uh, you know, done whatever, or took, took that this next week off. And it's like, it's not, nothing's going to happen. Like no one's going to like get me in trouble or whatever for like missing a week of yeah. the podcast. But the way I look at it is like, if I can't even like commit to, putting it out every week like why should i expect anyone to care about it you know yeah. so like uh, you have to almost like respect the thing you're doing first for other people to want to like enjoy it or whatever yeah 100 percent. one thing another thing i wanted to ask you is do you have mm -hmm. i guess two things do you have any other like some other plans you have for your own like youtube stuff and any ideas you're coming out with and then also What's the status report on the City Soda Club? Is that shit? Is <laughs> yeah. she done or <laughs> what's going on? Um, yeah, YouTube wise, I really enjoy YouTube. You know, like I really want to do do it a lot more. It's just like trying yeah. to figure out the time. I guess it's like sitting down and doing it like, again. Like the tutorial stuff is like, I don't know. It wasn't necessarily like buzz to do it. Or I have to come up with an idea of a tutorial that people haven't done or like you know. Sure. It's kind of a bit like. Oh, it's too it's too like for me it's too clinic like to the point too clinical and educational and I, I don't necessarily i want to sit down and watch basically what i'm trying to get to a point is what what do i want to watch when i sit down right. and I watch i want to watch some creative content you know i want to watch something with a design lens on it but what what do i i'm not saying that what my my recent video is anywhere near where i want it to be it's more of a test of like getting to that point you know it's yeah it's still i'm still learning in the whole the space and what i want to create but 
I want to sit down and create content that I would want to watch, which is less informative, but still with a creative lens, creative angle, mm. you know, creative storyline to it. But it's more easy watching, you know, it's easy to digest. You can sit home after a long day and you can sit down and just binge watch it or, you know, you sit down and just right. flick it on. You don't necessarily have to be so invested in the design world to watch it. Um, and why are you going to watch yeah. a tutorial if you're not going to do it then? You know, exactly. you're never just going to exactly. watch it for fun. <laughs> like some of my mates are, you know, well, a lot of my mates are in the creative industries. They're not necessarily designers. You know, some of my mates work in fashion. Some of my mates are like, art, you know, art, more art based or. Yeah. And what is something that's in the industry? What are they going to watch? They don't, they don't want to sit down and watch me, you know, bang out a Photoshop tutorial. Like yeah, some yeah. people will take that away and that's really, that's really helpful for a lot of people. And like, I, I get mm. that and that's, that's good for the people that need it. And, but then there's this other content that I want to create. I have an idea too. So yeah. you know how we were talking about making something? Uh, yeah. I don't know. That was like a while ago. Now we kind yeah. of just like didn't do it or whatever. But uh, yeah, I was thinking, so yeah, I did that video recently, the rank, like ranking the logos, right? Fast food. And it's mm -hmm. all like um, US or whatever. And then uh, this dude, Jack from the album art archive i was talking to him yeah. and he said like you should do one about like uk and i was like i don't really like maybe but like i don't really know like even what they are so i was thinking we could do it like a dual like cam you know and talk yeah. about it together and make something oh, like that yeah big time yeah let's do it 100 percent. yeah I'll because be you you know i don't know the then i'll look at it unbiasedly because i don't know he was like you gotta rank like greg's or some shit i, was like, I don't know what the oh, fuck that yeah. is <laughs> big time mate greg's is the place i'm not joking <laughs> greg's is i love greg's okay yeah. cool Sorry, yeah, i was yeah, probably we'll a little to... bit too high for that <laughs> yeah you're like greg <laughs> let's go yeah all right we'll, 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 we'll plan that out then and that'll be like yeah. something that i think could be fun and also like uh you know you're not gonna be like fuck we gotta we gotta do it you know or whatever it'll yeah. just be like fun thing but um uh what um so yeah what about the soda club i'm not gonna we can't See, let you get club, away yeah, from yeah. that one <laughs> can't, i can't defer that one that's also <laughs> taking a little pause you know um, yeah i need to figure fine. out that as well um again it's this idea of like spinning too many plates like and even if it's done like it it, it, you, it did what done. it did you know it's not yeah it's not done. Right. It's, it's, i'm trying uh, to get you uh excited <laughs> <laughs> it's not done it's it's um it's still in, it's still its infancy i don't even think it's side yet for what i, know, I want man, it to be the people future. have been saying it's it's dead i've been hearing all the streets that oh really that yeah, no, it's done out. yeah <laughs> no, I'm, I'm washed i'm washed it's like i was done no I, I honestly like my vision for what it is in the future this is more of just a yeah. the intro like i see it as being like a creative where like a creative factory a creative studio for multiple mm -hmm. people to get involved i see it as a long-term project studio, i remember like, you as, as, me as that a studio time. vibe like you know like i want to collaborate with artists i want to have a roster of clients where i bring in you know i'm working on it as well or i bring in people from different from all over to work on projects yeah. for a bigger client i want mate ideally i would have like a warehouse with like a studio shoot and a built-in bar and people can yeah, come and yeah. work there and like that's what i got in the future it's a long way away but it's not it's not done but i just think maybe the whole for me maybe the whole sharing thing maybe is like it's just one just of those things that, that whole got. like um that whole that whole idea is like done i don't think it's your your fault that it's done either like that yeah. the idea of sharing like no one even cares about the person that shared it themselves it seems like so like why exactly. are they gonna want exactly. someone else like, to do it I've, i mean how like i started it quite a few years ago and it's like been a daily thing where i was sharing mm -hmm. it and it's built up but it's just become this thing where it's just like you're just sharing artwork for the fact of sharing artwork it supports the person yeah but like it's building you yeah but then like oh, i just felt like it was too i don't know it was almost too soulless there was nothing more to it for me mm -hmm. whereas like if i'm going to want to work with other artists or i want to support other artists i want to do it in like a more authentic real way so that's why i kind of stopped it like i want to yeah. collaborate with artists or i want to like pick up a project and i'm like okay this artist will be right for it that i know through city Sony club or like this is the right person like, i want to work with people through that way like yeah, I, I just mm -hmm. I just think yeah, there's also like a million and one other accounts that are sharing things every day. Same format, right. same hashtags. I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's almost that format has run it run its course. Yeah, and I need to kind of figure out what the next thing is. It's definitely not done at all. Um, 
it's still in its early days. I've um, got a lot planned for the future. You know, Zine 2 might come out. Who knows? But yeah. I want to work with people and support people in a different way now. And like, you know, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what's next exactly, but there is definitely a next and it's definitely going to involve other people and supporting like a community of creatives. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how I can do that maybe in a bigger scale or a more intimate scale with people. Mm. Um. But yeah, it's it's a long term project. I don't see it. Yeah, I see it as a, a, a future project. This is like a yeah, like a, a long term. Right. That's cool. Project, yeah. So. I mean, that's you're only in like phase one. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm I'm stoked to see what you do with it. I'm stoked to see what you do with the channel. Getting back on uh, back on your grinder at four a.m. Waking up, uh, recording videos or whatever you, you were saying in your in your video and whatnot. It wasn't, it was, and, mate, I, I am a seven a.m. guy now. Do you know what I mean? Like my life's changed. <laughs> I get up seven and have granola. Like things have changed for me. You know. Yeah. You're on your <laughs> like no Gary longer... V type shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I see those videos all the time. It's like, yeah, I'm up at five a.m. Like I've taken free calls. You're not even out of bed Trade yet. Trade like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the market's closed. I'm out there doing press ups. Like I'm not. I'm not about that yeah. that's not happening but, mate. for real but regardless yeah I'm, I'm stoked to check it out and i wanted to thank you again for coming on or we'll, we'll get get you out of here and uh get you to bed and what, or whatever you're gonna be doing after this oh and, yeah i'll go to bed uh, <laughs> everyone go check out louis shit if you don't already know about it on youtube instagram louis moss and thanks again man help me out in no, a, thank a little you. pinch thanks for having me on again Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.